watch in the top. That's okay. I just noticed too. Yeah. Um, wow, that's the first time my phone told me that. Yeah. So. so can, yeah. I yeah, yours too. Thing. You yeah, want to continue? Me, <laughs> it, it told me too that it was being recorded. Interesting. Yeah. Some new Zoom feature, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, Pentecost Sunday, although I didn't grow up it, with a liturgical calendar <clears throat> being part of worship, but anytime the Holy Spirit was mentioned, my ears perked up. And so this, this is one of my favorite times in our church year because uh, I love the idea of God being the aspect of the Holy Spirit being one aspect of God. Um, the other day in the Wednesday morning meeting, when we had this discussion, informal discussion about the upcoming worship <laughs> readings, we talked about, I think somebody's unmuted. We talked about uh, the spirit being possibly a feminine face of God. And this morning I thought, you know, I've lived with a lot of cats in my life. And I think about how mother cats uh, they teach their young, they lovingly uh, clean them, uh, they snuggle with them and love them and teach them how to grow up into cats. They give them understanding and nourishment and protection, sometimes fear, fierce protection. And that all made me think of God in the form of the Holy Spirit and the gifts that that are given to us so this song for gathering is kind of an invocation to the spirit to join us come share the spirit moving among us weaving in and through this place breaking down the walls that split and divide bringing wholeness to embrace Come rushing waters, let justice roll like an ever-flowing stream. Till the poor find strength as they hear the good news and the rich adopt new dreams. Come blazing fire, anoint our tongues with the messages of peace. Till the blind we see and deaf we hear and in prison find release. Come gentle breezes, breath of all loving given to God's chosen band. Let us dance and feast with the broken ones, bring compassion to our land. Come lift our hands in joyful applause to the maker of the earth. From our Father who lifts us when we fall, and our Mother who gives us birth. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. We Welcome, thank you. Nice to see as you. we know, this is Bethany Congregational United Church of Christ. We strive to be open and affirming as uh, our title uh, says about us, a place of healing, a center of the community, many, many different things. And who knows where the spirit is taking Bethany in these next months. That will be the subject of our sermon, our reflections today. Uh, somebody clarify my mind. Are in announcements, uh, do we have Perry Kirtley? I haven't looked at the back page. Who is being ordained today at Touchstone Church? Just yes, so everybody's aware of that. It's at I, the end of the church. Stop. It's at the end of their morning morning service. Their service starts at ten thirty. Okay. I'm assuming it'll be around eleven thirty. Okay, I cannot attend that, but uh, Pastor Arlene and her husband are going to be there, so that'll be good. And hopefully, anybody else who wants to zoom in. Uh, can be supportive of that. Uh, Carrie, just as a reminder, is actually being ordained out of her seminary work that she's done now. Uh, Pastor Arlene, when she is ordained into the UCC, 
she's coming out of uh, license status in the Methodist Church, and therefore the UCC uh, has a requirement that she be ordained, if I understand all that correctly. Uh, welcome to those of you who have just joined us. Uh, good to see you all with us. We've had a good group this morning. Uh, in terms of welcome, the question really is the Holy Spirit. And if I asked each one of you what you felt the Holy Spirit was for you and had you experienced the Holy Spirit, that might be a very interesting discussion. But think about that and hold that thought as we come to centering prayer uh, and those kinds of things. Now, Pastor Arlene's ordination is next week, am I right? That's correct, Tom. Yes. Okay. All right. Just want to make sure, obviously, we can highlight that in Facebook and this next week. Do we have announcements, Caitlin, our liturgist today? We sure do, sir. Happy birthday and anniversaries to Thomas and Lynn Jenkins. New members, if you are interested in becoming a member of Bethany Congregational Church, please contact my mom or Pastor Tom. Preparing to reopen. As we prepare to reopen the church, we want to communicate with everyone. If you have any questions and your office does not have the email, please email Desiree. The health committee will send out a brief two-minute survey next week in preparation for in-person worship. Your responses will be very helpful to everyone. And if you have questions, please contact the people who are listed. Informal Zoom discussion of next week week's Sunday's worship theme. All are welcome Wednesdays at 1030. Bethany Friday evening gathering. Please join us on Friday evening at 7 p.m. to chat about our week and meet with our with your Bethany family on Zoom. The Hedgehog Book Club meets the third Saturday on Zoom at from 12 to 2. Our new book is A Trick of the Lie by Louise Penny. For more information, please contact Jenny. Um, LGBTQ and Allies book chat meets every Sunday night weekly from 7 to 8, 15 p.m. on Zoom. And their new book is Dying to Be Me. Um, to volunteer for the Bethany Food Pantry, please contact uh, Paul or Lupita. And then strengthening the church. Donations can be made by mailing your co contributions to Shirley Grove, and her address is listed below. Yeah, uh, just one thing. This is Nate. The Ally Book Club is actually taking a hiatus until July. So first Sunday in July, we'll restart. Thanks, Nate. Anything more, Caitlin? No, that's it. Sarah. Thank you. <clears throat> I just, I want to make a, a plea, I guess, for people to answer the survey, which is coming out this coming week. Uh, it's going to have an impact on how we go about reopening the church. Um, we really would like to know who is vaccinated and who is not vaccinated. And um, it, that the answers to that will be just all kinds of helpful, um, not just to the council, um, but to everybody in the church. So it's an anonymous survey. Um, all that's being collected is just the, the data, not names or, or anything else. And Stephanie has designed it that way, Stephanie Montano. So she will be sending it out um, early this week. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Caitlin, for some reason, we've been trying to figure out who does the invocation. Do, do you want to take that? Yeah, Sarah just sent me a private message saying that it wasn't Mark Leader, but yeah, I'm taking it over. Okay. All right. Please join me as I read the invocation. Amazing God, how manifold, manifold are your works. The earth is full of life you have created. In forms too numerous to count. You have linked us, you people, to the earth and to all living things. We are independent. We can survive only if we have reverence for life. Come among us now to make your ways known. 
Help us to dream dreams and see visions of your intentions for this world and for your church. Amen. <laughs> Before the call to worship, um, a few suggestions for our listening uh, today as we approach the scriptures. Psalm 104 is just a beautiful, beautiful hymn of all creation. And so we think about how God has created all things and God has created us and given us the breath of life in the spirit. When we reach the first reading, it will be the uh, Acts account of the giving of the Holy Spirit, uh, bearing in mind that the Holy Spirit has existed since the beginning of creation, but now it comes in a special sense to help birth the life of the church. Paul writes in Romans about the world groaning as if it is in childbirth. Again, it reminds us of Stephanie's reminder at the beginning of worship, the Holy Spirit is neither male nor female nor uh, uh, any other definable human characteristic. Uh, rather, the Holy Spirit is free and is of God. Uh, but sometimes help thinking of the Holy Spirit as a female is really helpful and, and liberating. And then finally, the Gospel of John is, again, about Jesus talking with his people about the coming of the Spirit. So let us engage in the call to worship. The day of Pentecost has come and we are together. Will the works of God be known among us today? We live in the valley, we live in the valley, in the valley of dry bones. Of dry bones. Around, Around and, and within us is, is emptiness. emptiness. God comes to us as a gentle breath or a violent wind. Catch your breath, God's breath, and live. There are stirrings, there are stirrings deep, deep within, within that, that give, us hope. They give us hope. There is a spirit, there is a spirit linking us, us to one another. one another. Fires of love dispel life's shadow. God's spirit comes to give us new life. Surely. God is in this place. place. May the glory, May the glory of, God of God be known, known among us today. today. Amen. 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 The Psalter reading today is Psalms 104, verses 24 to 34 and 35. O Lord, how manifold are your works! 
and wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there. Living things, both small and great. There go the ships and everything that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them food in due season. When you give them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die, and they return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to him for rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Please join me in the prayer, prayer of confession. In your face is hidden from us, mighty God. We forget that there is more to life than the daily pursuits that occupy our attention. We are weak because we have not taped the resources you place within us. We are engaged only by what we can see and touch and hear. Our frantic self-centeredness dries up our bones and we lose hope. Call us out of the graves in which we have chosen to live. The deep roots that keep us from knowing the fullness of your life reveal when we welcome your spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us take a moment for silent reflection upon our sins and the sins of the world and the God of grace who comes to us each day. God is the God who gathers us together around a forgiving Christ. His grace is for each and every one of us and for all things in Christ. So let's take a moment to greet one another uh, with the peace of Christ that we have all received. The peace of Christ be with you all. Peace of Christ, everyone. Also with you. Peace of Christ. All right. First reading is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of the violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound of the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, and they asked, not all of these who are speaking Galileans, and how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Perigia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they were filled with new wine. But Peter's standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, 
for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prosper, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall see dreams, or dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here in this place, new light is streaming. Now is the darkness vanished away. See in this space, our fears and our dreamings brought here to you in the light of this day. Gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken, we shall arise at the sound of our name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearns toward your face. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be light to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the haughty. Gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so meek and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters, call us anew to be salt for the earth. Give us to drink the wine of compassion, give us to eat the bread that is you. Nourish us well and teach us to fashion lives that are holy and hearts that are true. Not in the dark of building confining, not in some heaven light years away, but here in this place the new light is shining. Now is the kingdom, now is the day. Gather us in and hold us forever. Gather us in and make us your own. Gather us in, O oh peoples, together. Fire of love in our flesh and our bone. Fire of love in our flesh and our bone. The second reading is Romans chapter 8, verses 22 to 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruit to the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in the weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very, very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And prepare hearts and minds to hear the word of God in the 15th chapter of John, our gospel for this day. Jesus said, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asked me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. 
Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I did not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send the advocate to you. And when the Spirit comes, the Spirit will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, the spirit will guide you into all the truth. For the spirit will not speak on its own. It will speak wherever the spirit hears. And the spirit will declare to you the things that are to come. The spirit will glorify me because the spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the father has is mine. For this reason, I said that the spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. The gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. You might recall the unusual story uh, that I shared from a book I'm reading, recommended to you, Diana Butler Bass's book titled Freeing Jesus. Great title, Freeing Jesus. I mentioned it in our reflections a couple of weeks ago. And you may recall uh, Bass is kneeling in a, a small chapel, a prayer chapel of a large cathedral. And as she kneels there, she's looking up at a beautiful stained glass image of Jesus. She asks for a response to her earnest prayer and receives only silence. And then the conclusion of the account, she hears the startling words, get me out of here. And now as I'm reading through the book, it's clear that uh, her reference in this story, a true experience that happened to her, uh, points in part to Jesus calling for his own freedom, a freedom from the ways uh, Jesus is sometimes used in society, boxed in, uh, Jesus' freedom taken away in a sense, but also a call from within Diana's own person to be set free from a church and a world that is too often imprisoned by self-serving rather than God-serving priorities. And so I'm suggesting simply this morning, this Pentecost Sunday morning, that as we listen to and picture in our own minds these strange visions associated with the Holy Spirit, the flames dancing on the heads of the people, a wind that blew across the face of the earth from the very day of creation called Ruach, the Spirit, and people's strange behaviors uh, where the Spirit even changed their ways of speaking and their ways of behaving. That in all of this, we allow ourselves to be called this morning to a different way of thinking and seeing, a different plane. One of the things uh, Bass wrote about <clears throat> after this opening uh, example was about being about six years old in church and having learned what she had learned about Jesus up to that point, and then watching the behavior of the adults around her. Bass writes this, as I became more aware of the world beyond school and church, I could not figure out how it was loving to the black people who came into my grandfather's store 
to make them use the back door. I could not figure out how it was loving to cheer a cruel sheriff on the news using water cannons on kids my own age. I could not figure out how it was loving to insult women with opinions and to tell them to get back into the kitchen. I could not figure out how it was loving to shoot people in some far away place called Vietnam. I did not think Jesus taught any of these things. And so in a very child's eye view of the world, what is suggested to us on this Pentecost morning is also very simple, that God's spirit is blowing freely through this world. And this, I believe, is the important thing for you at Bethany. The reason this community exists has everything to do with God's spirit blowing through this world. Let's just think about that for a moment. Don't we sometimes tend to think of the church as somehow a product of our own efforts or the efforts of all of us together. We have put this church together. Don't we sometimes tend to think of church membership as our, our generous offering, whether of financial resources as a way of helping or helping out with a particular task and in some way helping the life of the church? Uh, don't we naturally think of those things as our own personal decision to share something that we, that we have? And maybe we even think of gathering on Sunday as something we might get something out of. I certainly tend to feel that way when I leave worship on Sunday morning and feel like I have received something from this gathering together and this worship that we have done uh, together. And yet, if we truly hear with the lessons and psalm and gospel and the liturgy and the music are saying to us this morning, there is a spirit of God that is so completely independent of us, that is blowing through this world, that was before creation began, as Psalm 104 said so beautifully this morning, a spirit that breathed life into the very dust that we once were and created human kind. A spirit, and this is most important, a spirit that breathes life into each one of us this morning and this church. The scriptures are very clear that without the life that God breathes into us now, we would be like the valley of dry bones. In the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel described a people who had gone astray. They had lost their vision. And along with it, they had lost their hope. And they had simply collapsed into nothing but dry bones. Now, if you're following me so far, especially the part about the spirit blowing through the trees, but having everything to do with how and why Bethany exists, then is it not also clear that your path ahead in the life of this congregation in these days and weeks to come is also very clear in a way. It is not fundamentally about on June 1st and thereafter welcoming a new pastor in Arlene Turner, 
or especially it is not about deciding what you like and what you don't like about her and the way she preaches on Sunday morning or whatever the case might, might be. It's not about that. Nor, when you think about it, is it about Pastor Turner coming and after a couple of weeks doing an evaluation of you all and saying to herself, gee, I wish I hadn't made this decision to come. No, it's not about that. It's about the Spirit of God that is breathing in and through this call process. Now is the time to look up. Everybody look up, even though you're probably inside like I am. And watch for that spirit to open our ears and listen for where the spirit is blowing. How God can work and speak and live in the life of this congregation and consequently in each one of you and in the community. Do you see the difference in those two things, the, the human way of looking at this process and the understanding that the spirit underlies it so firmly? So if you're on the call committee, like I suggested last week, you can, you can stop thinking now about that very human process you've been through, even reading all those profiles and trying to figure out who might be good for Bethany and so on, that, that very human process. If you voted in the congregational election of a new pastor several weeks ago, you can stop thinking about that vote and whether you made the right choice. No, from June 1st forward, be aware that you have entered into a partnership with God in which, and this makes me think of you talking about when you open the building, in which the doors of the building are being opened to the spirit of God blowing in new ways. And here's the weird thing about it. Neither you nor Pastor Arlene have any idea where that spirit is blowing any more than when I was called to start that interim period that turned into this long, long period, any more than we back then had any idea of where the Spirit was leading. Where the Spirit is concerned, it blows where it will, according to scriptures, according to the mind, of God. And here's another weird thing. In the scriptures this morning, there are several ideas shared with us about the Spirit and how the Spirit works. So there's the idea that the Spirit gives us life. There's the idea that the Spirit is the paraclete, meaning the one who teaches all we need to know. And that all we need to know is to trust in the Spirit to direct us. But there is another word that is mentioned in describing the Spirit. And I think this is very important. The Spirit is described as protector. Protector. I've said to you on a number of occasions that the matter of being church in our society, and this is my hunch and my opinion, the matter of being church is likely to become more difficult. It may feel more like we are risking more of ourselves to simply be a part of a church and to try to follow this spirit and this Jesus. Do you remember the 
a beautifully imaginative account of the Tower of Babel in the Hebrew Testament. You know, in the Babylonian Empire, there was a religious vision that if you could build a ziggurat, a tower, high enough into the skies that you could reach the heavens. You could literally connect heaven and earth. If they built the towers higher and higher, eventually they believed with their own human hands and determination would reach heaven. And the story then concludes that God scattered the people in their endeavor. That no longer were they able to understand each other. Their languages were confused. There was no longer a common purpose for humanity as the story goes. I think the Tower of Babel is a very simple way to look at our world and see there the confusion of purposes that are so obvious. These days, deepening divisions among people, a sense of us versus them, winning or losing in our way of seeing the world, scapegoating of someone who's different than we are. Even in the Delview neighborhood, as you carry out ministry in these next months, there are divisions between people, and we've talked about how one of the issues in the community is trying to figure out how to deal with homeless people in the community. So what's the alternative to this business of having become so scattered, unable to hear one another? Seeing the color of a person's skin as a way of dividing us, having the power to separate us from each other, etc. The alternative is very simple. If the people have become scattered, the Spirit of God is at work gathering. I believe that's the purpose of Bethany Church, to allow that uniting, healing, compassionate, forgiving Spirit of God to breathe through this congregation out into the world. If you are able to do that with Pastor Turner as your shepherd, I can guarantee you this. With clouds of discontent that loom increasingly large in this country, with fans on the flames of prejudice turned up to the highest speed, the temptation being fed to give up on the democratic process and just let all of us battle one another for power in this world. If you tune into the spirit of God and do it well, you will be opposed by the rulers of this world, or as the Apostle Paul would say, the ruler of this world. But you will truly be the ecclesia, the church, the community of faith in so doing, the gathered people of God, gathered around the forgiving Christ, who himself became a victim, but now reigns with God and the Holy Spirit. So there will be no more looking for sacrificial lambs to scapegoat at the altar of selfishness and greed. No more us versus them, feeding the world's desire even unto war 
St. Paul said it so well. The whole creation groans as if it were in childbirth. But the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. Calls us, calls you together as a community of faith in order to bring the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Spirit of truth, of life, of heart, we bring ourselves as gifts to Is Caitlin there? Let's see if she comes back on. God has given us food in due season, opening a kind and loving hand to fill us with good things. The face of the ground is continually renewed each year so we can reap its bounty. Likewise, our spirits are renewed. Our offerings are but a small expression of thanks. As we continue to receive an offering as a congregation, uh, which are necessary for the ongoing life at this point, very important. Donations can be made online to our, uh, at our webpage, bethanyuccsa.org or mailed to Shirley Graff and her address is in the bulletin. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ the word in flesh born low. Praise Holy Spirit evermore. One God triune, whom we adore. Caitlin, are you there? Yes. All right, good. You know where we are? Yeah, it's we're on the unison prayer of dedication, or the offertory of dedication. Okay, good. All right. So please join me in the offertory prayer of dedication. How manifold are your works, amazing God. When there are dry bone times in our lives, we can look to you for new breath and hope and renewal of life. Your spirit comes and we are lifted up and linked to one another. We bring our offerings as an expression of thanksgiving for all your gifts. May your glory be proclaimed in all we give and all we do. When we are together and we scatter to do you, to do your will in other places. Amen. Amen. Uh, the prayers of the people during this five months that I've been back, we've simply been kind of gathering uh, prayers of the people. If there are prayers that you bring this morning, you are welcome to unmute and Kurt will notice you. I think especially this week, we need to be uh, keeping in mind in prayer the fragile peace that exists in our world. Sometimes we think peace is the normal state of the world, but I believe peace is that, uh, in a way, it's that force of God on which we rely and which we call and attempting to bring about peace. All those people who have been 
hurt, injured, their residences destroyed in the Middle East, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we pray for all of them. Other prayers? Stephanie? Thanks, Kurt. Uh, my stepdad is having some pretty serious health issues, and my mom and I would appreciate your keeping uh, him and our family in your prayers. Um, Rick? Yes, uh, prayer for my, my cousin. Uh, he lives in Juarez, Mexico. Uh, we were raised together. Um, he just had a, a stroke. Uh, he's my age uh, and he uh, wheelchair bound and he's struggling to uh, accept where he's at. And I tell him to keep, to keep fighting and uh, prayers for him. And hopefully he has a recovery and lives a, a beautiful life. Thank you. Anyone else? So we lift up these prayers and those prayers we hold within our hearts uh, for people we love, for this world, uh, for encouragement of peace and justice, uh, wherever that might come. And, uh, and we do so in hope, believing in this spirit that comes to us, guides us, comforts us, and protects us. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy, thy kingdom, kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is, as in, it heaven. is in heaven. Give, Give us this day, day our daily our bread, 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 bread and forgive and us our sins. Our sins. As we As forgive we those who have sinned against us. us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And so, at this time, in our worship, we were reminded of how our Lord on that night of the Last Supper took bread, broke it, and gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after the same manner, he took the cup of wine. When they had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this. This cup is God's new covenant. It is given for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you do this from now on, do this to remember me. So this is the body of Christ given for you. Please go ahead and take part in the bread. Body of Christ for you. And this is the blood of Christ, the gift of God's creation and love. Drink from the cup. Blood of Christ. May these gifts which we have received strengthen and keep us unto everlasting life. Amen.
May life hold you and keep you. The sun make its light to shine upon you. And there be peace in all the world. The beauty of the universe enfolds you. And the hope and joy of love of loving, the joy of giving, living in your heart. Amen. 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 Commission and blessing. You may unmute if you would like. God's spirit is being poured out on this church. We carry it with us into our everyday world. With joy and amazement, we scatter to serve. God's love is changing us and granting new life. Children will share new insights. People of all ages will dream and see visions. God is inspiring us in fresh ways. We are filled with hope for each new day. Spirit will help us in our weakness. We will be guided in all truth. Each day, Each day we will practice, we will practice what, we are learning. what we are learning. Throughout our days, Throughout our days we, will we will continue in prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Let's see if the candles go out. They're making a mess. <laughs> we have wax blowing all over the place. Uh, again, <laughs> a reminder um, if I'm right, Carrie Kirtley, uh, you know, we had the terrific benefit of Alvin and the Methodists, as we called them, <laughs> coming into the life of the congregation and then Touchstone starting up in Bernie. So uh, if you would like to attend, uh, you can just look for, whoops, you can just look for uh, Touchstone uh, on Facebook or uh, on the web. You can do a search on the web. I'm sure you'll be able to find where the, the um, ordaining is happening. Great thing, Carrie's done a lot of hard work to get to this point. And I think she and Billy are still going to continue to work. Alvin, do you happen to know anything about what's happening in the organization at Touchstone? I, I think they're going to simply continue together. Yes, yes. I don't think there are any immediate plans to change that. Right. I think there. I think the church seems to be going well. So I, I don't know what time exactly the ordination is. As I said, their service is at ten thirty. And, and the ordination is a short service at the end of that service. So I mean, I'm thinking 1120, 1125 or something like that. But so are they Zooming it? Because I think they're back in person worship, right? Today is their first day back in, in, in person worship, but they are Zooming it. Oh, okay. There is a virtual connection. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm looking for it. I was especially excited when Pastor Arlene uh, texted or emailed and said that um, they were planning to be there. That is such a good sign. Uh, if we can maintain a good relationship with Touchstone, and now there is a woman who has begun ministry at Faith in New Braunfels. Uh, oh, really? So, yeah. So there, I would be would not be surprised if there's some renewed work and ministry and relationship between the three congregations. Nice. Exciting to think about. 
But then I'm not going to predict where the spirit's going either. I'm and sorry. I, if somebody needs a link, I can send you the email that I received that has the link for the ordination. Okay. Thanks, Alvin. And you send it? Yes. Very good. So how's everybody doing? I'm good. I wonder well, I mentioned that 